All right, guys, I want to show you a really quick uh, tutorial about how to sign up for Brainscape. It's pretty easy. So you want to fill in this information. That is my email address. And I'll type in a password. I'll confirm the password. I'll click on Accept Terms. Uh, oops. And then I would click register. Well, you know what? It doesn't really matter because I already actually have an account with this. So let me show you as soon as you click register, assuming you have something new, uh, what it's going to show you, what you'll see on your screen. Um, okay. So as soon as you log in, you will see something that looks a lot like this. Now, I want to show you something very, very, very important. There is actually another class that they add in here called Knowledge Rehab. I don't care at all about Knowledge Rehab. That comes free with Brainscape. I didn't create that. I point that out because if you end up on here, you might actually notice that there is a U.S. History deck. That is not my deck, okay? The one that I have created for you is, well... Actually, all these are decks I've created for you. So what you will do in class for me the first time you do this are the first two decks, the standard one decks, the review questions and terms and definitions. Let me show you how this works, okay? So if I click on here, you will see, well, it's going to tell you. It says, uh, well, uh, whatever. i will walk you through it. I don't care about that. Um, and I'm going to switch this to overall. I don't really care about this round. I find that confusing. Um, so here's what we're going to do. All right. We're going to say, uh, what's the agreement during the Constitutional Convention that slaves be counted as three-fifths of a person when determining the number of representatives per state? Well, that's obviously the three-fifths compromise. I think we know that. I'm going to click on reveal answer. And sure enough, I'm right. Now, here's the magic of Brainscape. It's going to ask me how well I knew it. See, it's moving down there to draw my attention to it. If I feel like I don't know it at all, like that was brand new to me, I would click on a one or I could put it on my keyboard. If I feel like I know it super, super, super well, I could press five and there we go. Now, the difference between the one and the five is that if I click one, I'm going to see this card again in like just two or three turns. If I click the five, I'm not going to see this one again until I've mastered everything else in the deck, okay? So, could you cheat on this, cheat in quotation marks, and just click 5555555 and be done in seconds? Yeah, absolutely you could, but this would do you absolutely no good. to be a waste of time, and my guess is that on the test, some of these things you'd see and you'd be like, what the heck is that? Okay, I would not recommend doing that at all. It tells you how many cards you've got up here. In this case, there are 51. If you want to see all the cards in the deck, you can click that button right there and you can scroll down through all of them, okay? One more thing I want to point out is that after you've rated something, let's say you've already rated that a five, you can use this to go back and reset it, okay? So you can say, ooh, actually, I don't know it, and then you can work through all these until you do, okay? Um, just a reminder, for the first time out, and really for every time, yeah, we're going to quit. Um, for every time we do this, you're going to need to do both decks. You know, there is an app. It's a great app. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, standard one, review questions and terms and definitions. You need to do both. They're both part of the assignment. Okay. If you have any questions, you're welcome to either contact me if we're still on a Zoom call, or you can shoot me an email, and I'll get back to you as soon as we can. I hope this is helpful.